What is up guys, Rick Kak is here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we have the complete guide for how to get the new Lumina exotic hand cannon in Destiny 2. This video is going to showcase not only exactly what you need to do to complete this new exotic quest, but also provide a ton of time saving tips, tricks, and pitfalls to avoid to save you hours in game. And so, let's get started. Now. First things first, because I actually got the weapon, this isn't going over the database steps, where do you get this weapon? Where do you start this quest? Well, you have to go to the exact same place where you began the Thorn exotic quest, if you can remember. It's past the Trossland into this area, as you can see, and eventually you are going to go through a teleporter, run up this hill, there's kind of a cliffside route you can take, and it's going to be in a special box. Now, when you open this box, this chest, so to speak, you're going to get two different items. The first one is the exotic quest step, and then there's also another item that's going to help you get that exotic quest step. So, the exotic quest step says, identify the location of the original thorn using your system positioning device, which is the other item you got. Now, your system positioning device will give you a location but very importantly, that location is going to change all the time. Pretty much every hour, it's going to change. Mine, at the time I did this, said it's located somewhere in Shaft 13 in the European Dead Zone. Shaft 13 being a lost sector in the sludge. So we just traveled down there and as you can see, went in and found it pretty easily. But some are located in the Dreaming City, some on Titan, and some are more difficult to find than others. People have been posting uh, locations to Twitter and so on. So I would recommend if you're having trouble finding your chest, just Google it, and you're very likely to find someone who has posted a picture. It is random, it's gonna change depending on when you do this, so it's very hard to tell you guys exactly where to go. But once you do this, things are gonna stay consistent. Now, once you do open the chest found with the locator, you're going to get a new exotic quest step, Bearer of Evil's Past. This has you generate 250 orbs with allies. And I really do mean with allies. You want to be doing this quest, I'm going to tell you guys right now, with as many teammates as possible. So of course, that's three people off the start, but if you have another team going, you can eventually combine into six people. That is going to help further down the line. So keep that in mind. But simply go to somewhere like the Blind Well that's going to make it extremely easy to generate orbs. The Blind Well specifically, every time you get the Harmony buff, you are going to be shooting out supers and generating orbs very easily. Remember also that some supers are better for generating orbs than others. For example, if you're playing Titan, Thunder Crash can get 5-7 orbs from a single super. It's pretty hard to do that with Hammers, for example. So, generate as many orbs as you possibly can, masterwork weapons seem to help as well alongside supers, and get people in your team to generate orbs as well, because those will count to the progress, and in pretty much one blind well completion, it really doesn't take that much time, you will get the 250 orbs generated. Okay, so once you've done that, you're actually going to get a bunch of different rewards, several quest steps, and a brand new weapon the Rose Legendary Hand Cannon. And this weapon is going to have like no perks on it. Actually completing each of the three different quest steps you just got is going to add perks to this legendary weapon. So those quest steps are number one, band together, complete a nightfall strike with a score of 50,000 or higher. Then after that, you have face the hordes, complete encounters in the blind well at any of the black armory forges or an escalation protocol. And then lastly, you have defend the light, defeat multiple enemy combatants in a row without reloading your weapon. So here's some time saving tips. For Defend the Light, that really shouldn't be too difficult. If you are struggling there, I would recommend using a machine gun. You can kill a lot of enemies before you need to reload with the Thunderlord, the Hammerhead, etc. Moving on from there, for the Encounters Completed step, well, what activity should you be doing? Which one gives you the most progress? Well, for Blind Well, you get around 3 points in total for a Tier 3 run, going up to the boss. However, if you activate the heroic blind well at the end of tier 3, you get 4 points 
just from doing that. So if you are doing blind well, you must be putting in that unstable light and getting that heroic done because that's going to substantially increase your progress. Now, as for escalation protocol, waves one to six give you only one point. But if you do wave seven, it gives you four points. And remember, with how Escalation was updated a while ago, you can beat wave seven and it'll knock you back to wave six. So you do wave six again, then wave seven again, then wave six again, then wave seven again. So you can farm that relatively efficiently. Now, lastly, there's the forge. You get one point for wave one and wave two, and then for the boss wave, if you do that, you get two points. So four points in total. So what should you do? Well, if you don't have a full group of three, I would highly recommend Blind Well. It's the easiest activity, especially with everyone doing this quest. It's pretty likely you can walk in there and find multiple people who are going to be able to not only beat Blind Well, but also activate Heroic, which is again, key. Now, if you do have a three-man fire team and you guys are strong players, I would actually recommend the Forge, specifically the Velanger Forge, that can be completed pretty darn quickly. Like I can do two forge completions before I can do one heroic blind well completion from you know start to finish. And therefore I'm actually getting more points for doing forges. Escalation protocol, although it gets efficient, wave one through wave six is an absolute slog fest and so many things can go wrong. Even if you have a solid three man group, you do have the chance to fail it. So if you have like six people from your clan all ready to go, maybe escalation, but otherwise stick with either blind well or the forge. And the nightfall step is pretty self-explanatory, but remember 50,000 points actually isn't that much. If you put on blackout and heavyweight and then just have the light, like 10 light levels below what you are, you should be fine. We did strange terrain, had those modifiers and accidentally got 100,000. So that shows you just how low the modifiers can be. Okay, now once you've done all three of those steps, your rose is gonna have a lot more perks on them, and then you're gonna get a brand new exotic step called Fire Team Leader. Complete activities throughout the solar system with rose equipped. Fighting in a fire team with other rose wielders grants the most efficient progress. So, what activities? Well, to be honest, it doesn't really specify. You wanna do strikes, crucible, menagerie, stuff like that. Now, if you have three people, all with the rows equipped, the best thing to do is strikes. Specifically, you can pick Lake of Shadows. You don't have to go into the actual strike playlist. You can just do Lake of Shadows over and over and over again, and you can get sub four minute runs pretty easily with that strike. That's what we did. 12% per run, you're gonna beat it in no time. But what if you have access to more players? Well, you actually do have the chance to get a lot more progress. Specifically, menagerie is what you wanna do. A single menagerie run will give you 35% progress on this step. And if you have a talented team, all six players that know what they're doing, and you can get perfect points in the first two encounters and then go straight to the boss, you'll be defeating that pretty darn quickly. Now, of course, if you rather, Crucible is still an option. By the way, those are the activities you want to kind of stick to. We did test out story missions, for example, and they gave zero progress. So those are the ones that are confirmed to actually help with this quest step. All right, so once you're done with that, the next quest step is Strength in Numbers. Defeat Guardians with Hand Cannons as a team, generate Orbs of Light for fellow Guardians, and defeat Invaders in Gambit before they have killed any of your teammates. Guys, this is huge. This is gonna screw over so many people this quest step right here because it is worded terribly. A ton of people are gonna mess things up. So for that first part, of defeating guardians with hand cannons as a team, that part is pretty self-explanatory and that does work as intended. Go into the crucible, you can also do it in gambit technically, but go into the crucible, use a hand cannon. It does not have to be the rose, but that's actually not a bad legendary hand cannon, it turns out. But if you get kills, it gives you around 4% progress. 
If your teammates get kills, it gives you around 1% progress. You get points for assists even, stuff like that. So in a few Crucible games, as long as you are tagging as many people as you can with hand cannons, you should get this done to 100%. The trick here is the more the merrier. If you have a teammate on the other side of the map and they get a hand cannon kill and you're not involved at all, it's still gonna give you progress. So if you have all six people within a team all using hand cannons, that is the best way to do it. What's really gonna screw people over is the other two steps. Firstly, invasions denied. You actually have to have a hand cannon equipped, even though it doesn't say it. I got multiple kills on invaders when they had killed absolutely no one and it didn't give me this progress. So make sure you have some sort of hand cannon equipped, the rows if you wanna be extra safe, and then you can use a different weapon. Like as long as you have a hand can or the rose equipped, then you can use the truth to take down that invader and it will still count for your invasion denied. You only need to get one of these, but I mean, if you're doing it solo, you can go an entire gambit round without getting the chance to do this. Don't ruin your chance by not using a hand cannon. As with the orbs generated, if you're genning a ton of orbs and you don't have a hand cannon equipped, it doesn't seem to work. Make sure you have the hand cannon on and then gen orbs for teammates. Now, after you've done all three of these things, your quest step is going to update now called Bloom. Enter the strike will of the thousands with the rose equipped to reclaim lost light from the hive crystals and defeat Zol. Those are your two objectives. Light reclaimed, zero out of 11, and Zol defeated. So you have to, again, you have to have the rows equipped and that's because as soon as you load into the strike, and by the way, you can just load into the normal 200 light strike. There is not a special version you're looking for. You're actually gonna get a special buff when you have the rows out that's called Gardener's Touch. And this is gonna allow you to use the rows and shoot the crystals that are all around this strike. Once you kill 11 crystals, you will do that quest step. You can stop shooting them for the rest of the strike. Now, importantly, it doesn't seem like you can steal your allies' crystals. If you shoot a crystal and destroy it, your allies will still see that same crystal in the same spot on their game. So it's pretty easy to make sure everyone gets 11 crystals destroyed. Notably, when you do kill a crystal, it gives you the harmony buff just like from Blind Well, which is gonna recharge your super way quicker if you wanna run through this any faster. Then, as for killing Zol, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just kill him at the end of the strike, and as soon as you do, and the strike winds itself up and completes, you will outright get the Lumina. And this does seem to take the place of the Rose. However, notably, you can actually go into your collections withdraw the rose it comes with a range masterwork and a mod slot if you want to use that legendary hand cannon as well going forward thought i would throw that in there but in any event guys that is it that is how you get the lumina exotic hand cannon i hope you guys enjoyed this video found it informative and if you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video if you guys want to see more destiny 2 content similar to this don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on twitter at rick Kakis. that's linked in the description down below again i hope you enjoyed the video and as always have a good day